There are lots of travel size refrigerators on the market, and I've reviewed several of them on my channel before. But if you want something much bigger and something that can freeze and refrigerate in the same device, you have to step up to something like this. This is the Iceco VL90 Pro D portable refrigerator. Let's go quickly through some of the features and specs, and then we'll put this thing to the test and see what it can do. The D in Pro D stands for dual, as in dual zones. It has two compartments that operate independently of each other. You can set one to be a freezer and one to be a refrigerator, or both to the same. And the lids can be operated in either direction or removed completely for easy access. It can hold a total of 95 quarts and is quite large and heavy. So while it's technically portable, you aren't going to want to move this thing around that much, especially when it's full. It has easy digital controls for the temperature of each compartment and can be adjusted from 55 degrees Fahrenheit down to zero Fahrenheit. The VL90 is a compressor refrigerator, not a thermoelectric cooler refrigerator. It uses high quality components and has a nice long warranty. Now keep in mind when using compressor refrigerators that you want to keep it on a level surface and don't ever put it upside down or on its side. It has very strong handles on both sides and can be powered by either household AC power or 12 volt DC from a power bank or from your vehicle. All right, enough about that. Let's unbox this thing and see what we've got. Right off the bat, I love the lid design. After I figured out how to work it, that is. Being able to open it from either direction is great. And the hinge is strong and doesn't feel like it's gonna break over time. Inside, you can see the compartments. The one on the right has a hump on the bottom for the compressor and electronics, but they're both pretty big, easily as big as most portable refrigerators by themselves. The baskets are nice for easy loading and unloading, or just remove them for more space. Iceco included a nice user manual and the requisite AC and DC cords. With how many Chinese products are out there, it's nice to be able to read a user manual that's written by a native English speaker. Finally, it comes with an extra handle and some hardware in case one of the handles breaks. And that's a nice touch that they didn't have to do. So let's fire the VL90 up and see how it works. On the right side are the electronic controls. There are easy plus and minus buttons to adjust the temperature of both zones independently. So there's no confusing menus or anything to hassle with. You can also see that there's an eco mode and a max mode and a battery voltage monitor. With power to the fridge, another thing that I loved about it are the LED lights built into both compartments. They're bright and positioned at the top, so they shouldn't get blocked very easily. The VL90 is also quiet. Not silent, but pretty quiet compared to dorm fridges or other small compressor fridges. All right, so now let's put the VL90 Pro D to the test. I have my trusty USB thermometer that I'll put inside and we'll be able to see what the internal temperature looks like over time. After a full day on the eco setting, here's what the data log looks like. Keep in mind that the ambient temperature in my shop is on the cooler side to begin with since it's winter right now as I'm recording this video. You can see that it took about an hour and 10 minutes to drop from about 10 degrees Celsius or 50 Fahrenheit to negative 18 Celsius or zero Fahrenheit where it hovered the rest of the time. I then repeated the whole process on the max setting a few days later. This time the ambient temperature started out around 15 Celsius or 59 Fahrenheit. This test ran over a weekend so I apologize it's a little bit harder to read, but it took the same hour and 10 minutes to get to its set point even though it started out warmer. So it definitely seems like the max setting cools just a little bit faster. Finally, I did the whole thing again, but used a portable power station instead of grid power to see if anything changed. And I was absolutely shocked at the results. Just ignore the right side of the graph, as I let it run for several days and the power station ran out of power. As a side note, if anyone's interested in this power station, I'm going to post a review video on it very soon on my channel. But anyway, in this third test, the ambient temperature was warmer still, at 19 degrees Celsius but it only took 50 minutes to drop to the set point on the max setting. I have no explanation for that, but maybe the fridge breaks in and operates better over time. Who knows? Either way, it's pretty impressive. I did also try the fridge with DC power instead of the AC power, but didn't find anything noteworthy to report. 
but I did measure the power draw over time on the max setting. I let it run for 24 hours exactly and it had consumed 1.45 kilowatt hours of electricity. I would have tested the eco setting as well, but the results would not have been comparable because of the differences in ambient temperature. But eco mode does use slightly less power. As you can see here, it uses a maximum of about 71 watts when the compressor is running. And last but not least, I wanted to make sure there wasn't a massive surge current on startup that would necessitate a big inverter or big battery to overcome. I was able to power the fridge just fine with this small 33 amp hour battery that maxes out at 100 amps for a few seconds, or approximately 120 to 140 watts. But obviously a small battery like this wouldn't run this fridge for very long, I just did it to prove a point. In conclusion, this is a fantastic fridge. The only drawbacks are the price tag and the size and weight. But there really isn't any way to get around the size and weight on a fridge like this that can hold 95 quarts. And I think the price is reasonable given the obvious quality, performance, and warranty. Just not everybody's going to be able to afford to invest in this kind of serious hardware. Thanks for watching this review video. If you found it interesting or helpful, please leave a thumbs up and a comment below.